This right here is my Retro Mac Pro setup. We use this system all the time, so we're going to make this setup even better by completely removing all of these accessories here and making it unusable. Sounds awesome, right? Now, I know it sounds strange, but we are not just upgrading the Mac Pro. Now, the Hi-Fi area is still going to stay the same. This has been upgraded in the past. We've made a dedicated video about adding this Technics cassette deck and other awesome accessories like that. But in terms of the actual computer hardware, there's a lot more potential here. We have all this wasted space that is, well, doing nothing. And this area is actually going to have another desktop. This Optiplex right here. We've talked about this Optiplex before in previous videos. It's a very cool desktop from 2010. We've made some awesome hardware upgrades in terms of a new GPU. And we've also made some software upgrades because this now has macOS Lion with server installed. We have our Core 2 Duo right here and our Slim Form Factor GT730. Now this is a real gaming system. Maybe if you were making like a budget machine in 2014, 2015. So the plan with the Optiplex is to free up floor space by integrating this within the setup itself. It'll be out of the way, but still easy to access. We'll make some improvements with the monitors. The Mac Pro will still stay where it is right now because it's been working out really well in its current spot. And I can't guarantee that cable mess will be any better because, well, I mean, that's kind of just always going to be a thing unless you have all the super fancy cable management equipment. I'll try my best to make it look not terrible, but the main focus will be functionality. We will also try to make the power management a little better. Now, it's still not going to be ideal, but hopefully it'll be significantly better than how it is right now. I guess we can also do a small recap of how the setup is right now. Some things will stay the same, such as the keyboard and the mouse. Some things will significantly change, and you'll see that later on. When it comes to the keyboard and mouse though, these are actually recent additions. I recently restored this keyboard and it's been working out really well. I've also restored this mouse in the past and both of these are actually really nice to use with one another because they are matching Microsoft accessories from around the same time period and because we're using old Mac OS, there's actually software available for these products right here. So you can actually customize things. So if you want to have control or command or any one of these Mac OS shortcuts switched or whatever, you can do that. There's a lot more you can do with the mouse itself. Because we have some buttons on the side here, you can actually customize this for different Mac OS features. There's just a lot of cool options within the software itself. And even though they may not be Apple accessories, they certainly do fit the time period. These older Dell displays are fantastic to use. Not only do they have multiple video inputs, at least this one does, this one only has VGA and that's it. This one actually has a USB hub, VGA, DVI, and not to mention it has a widescreen panel with a pretty good picture. Now it may not be the latest and greatest, I'm pretty sure this doesn't even have LED backlights, but it is still a really nice monitor to use and it works really well with old Mac OS. Now this 4x3 monitor, the reason why I'm using 4x3 is because it fits well within the setup itself, but like I said, it only has VGA. There's no extra functionality with USB or anything like that, but the picture itself is still really nice with the panel that this has. And of course, you could use this with Windows, you could use this with other systems. In general, these are just really cool monitors to have. This external Seagate hard drive has always been a part of the setup in some way. For the longest time, I used it as my external iTunes drive, but ever since we got the Mac Pro, it's integrated within the system itself. More recently, I used this as a Hackintosh installer with my hack, but because we don't use it all the time in terms of iTunes or file management or stuff like that, it doesn't need to be in this spot right here. This is actually where I plan for the Optiplex to go. So at the very least, we're probably going to move this off to the side. If not, we could actually move it over to another setup where we could get some more use out of it. Because it has onboard Firewire, we could also use it with another Macintosh, a newer or even an older one like the G5. I mean, of course, this also has USB, but you get the point. We have both USB and Firewire, so we could use this with a variety of different systems. And I could even also daisy chain Firewire hard drives with this. Now I just need to get more Firewire drives in the first place. I know the power cables are kind of a mess here, but we also have two cool power strips. A beige one from the 90s, and a newer gray one from the 2000s. Of course, we gotta keep everything era appropriate, including the power management. 
This is probably one of the worst parts of the setup. We just have an iPad, some cables, and it's this MacBook right here. Now this was actually the main system in the setup before we got the Mac Pro, and this was the main machine with Mac OS Lion. Now it would be nice to use this as an actual MacBook, and even though the display itself does work, we don't have a backlight. So until I fix that, it's not exactly ideal to use. Yes, I can still use it, but this basically has to be connected up to an external display if I want to see anything without having to use like an external light source. Oh yeah, and this thing right here, it's just my high resolution awesome CRT monitor with a flat picture tube. And I really do want to make use of this display more. You kind of need to have a really awesome desk setup. One that can actually support the weight of this because, I mean, it takes up the entire shelf here. The only reason I have this here is because I can actually make use of it, kind of. It's not the most ideal spot, but it is still better than just having it on the floor. So with that out of the way, I now have to actually do the work here while you get to sit back and see the awesome end result. Everything is now off to the side, and once you take a step back to see what we have to work with, it's a lot of space. It was also a good opportunity to clean up everything because there was a fair amount of dust, but you can see that there is a ton of potential here. You can easily put the Optiplex and even several other systems or other accessories, and you'd still have room left over. And just like that, the Dell Optiplex is now officially part of the setup here. We also have an upgraded video solution. The main display here, the widescreen one, is still the same, but as you can see, the secondary one has been upgraded. So it's still a 4x3 display, but it makes more use of the space because we have a larger panel. We have multiple video inputs with VGA and DVI. We have the optional soundbar installed. We also have an additional USB hub. So not only do we have four extra USB ports with this, we have an additional four with this, and both of these are plugged directly into the Mac Pro. Now, if for some reason I need extra USB ports, I could always swap one of these over to use with this system, but this has a total of eight USB ports, two on the front and six on the back. So I think we are definitely good in terms of connecting other accessories. We have a lot of extra space to work with. We can easily leave some 30 pin and lightning cables plugged in. As for the network, the systems are powered by this airport base station. It sits on top of the G5 here and it is fantastic. It has always worked well for both Ethernet and a wireless extender. But to really make this setup even more awesome, let's add another airport base station and a network switch. You can also see that the desk setup itself is very clean. There's minimal cable mess, at least when you're actually using it because underneath is still, well, a cable mess. We can always improve this in the future and I'm more excited about the airport and the network switch because this means we can actually finally bring some more network capabilities, especially now that we have a Macintosh server. The airport on top of the G5 is a first generation airport. Meanwhile, this one right here is actually a fifth generation, the last one before the 2013 redesign. So this means we will not only have a faster connection, but it's basically the best of the old style. The only thing better than this would of course be the time capsule, but I'm using mine with my Mac Mini. Yeah, I know it doesn't make sense to use the older one and have the newer one do nothing, but that doesn't matter now because we're going to be using both of them. As for the Netgear, I know that it powers up. That's about it. I've had this for a while and I've never really made use of it, but now that we'll actually have more server stuff, file server things, Ethernet actually being in use apart from just, you know, Internet, this is going to be fantastic. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're just using an airport, this is also great because you have three Ethernet ports on the back, but having eight of them available is also nice. Besides, I have a ton of Ethernet cables that are just sitting around, doing nothing, so having this fast Ethernet switch is going to be really cool to use. But wait, through the magic of having a second one, we have another network switch. Now, this is a similar situation. It's a Netgear. I know it powers up. And that's about it. I really haven't used this at all. But the reason why we're including this one is that it seems to be gigabit compatible, yet this one seems to be limited to 10100. We can just connect both of these up to the airport. I mean, this isn't going to be like a super professional server setup in the first place, but at least I'll be able to use these, which is better than what they've been doing right now, which is just doing nothing. So I think this will be a pretty cool configuration. 
we have the newer airport and this network switch on top of the Mac Pro. The older airport will stay on top of the G5 and this will be for this system. Meanwhile, this will be configured up to this and we will also use the gigabit switch on top of the Optiplex here. This will supply internet for both this system and the Mac Pro. Meanwhile, we have all of these extra additional ports and by only using two of these on the airport, we will actually have an extra one free directly on this if for some reason we need direct access to this airport specifically. Now we just need additional ethernet cables. And if that's not enough, we have even more. We've got power applied to the setup here. I believe this Netgear actually has a switch on the back. Now that is awesome. And we're ready to reset the airport to work with this new server setup. The cool part about these airport base stations is that they still work with new versions of iOS, but you can also set them up with older versions such as iOS 6. Everything is now connected and working. This now has a green LED, which is fantastic because it means it's actually connected. And this actually indicates we are connected to a network. Same goes for the other Netgear here. We also have the other Ethernet jack on the Mac Pro connected up to this. So that way, if we want to, we could actually use the Mac Pro to communicate with another system or just to have an alternative way to connect to the internet. So in total, we have six spare Ethernet slots here. We have one free on the extreme and we still have two available on this one right here. We started off with a pretty decent setup, but now it's even better than before. We have extra ethernet gear, an entire new desktop, and an upgraded 4x3 monitor. Now this area looks kind of bad in comparison, but these are mainly just iPhone and other Apple cables that were at this setup, so I'll end up installing what I need off camera. With everything hopefully working as intended, we should now try out the setup itself. I've been wanting to make even more improvements to the Mac Pro setup here, so it's awesome to see how far this has actually evolved from before and now. Not only do we have extra accessories that we can actually make use of, but the best part is that these don't take up any extra space. So all the hardware accessories for Ethernet, because they're on top of the desktops, it's not like they're taking up extra space on the shelf here, or even on the floor or wherever else, and where they were previously stored, it's empty now because they're not in storage. They can actually be used, not to mention all of the extra ethernet cables. Now I understand that we probably don't need all of this hardware here, but it is still really cool to have. Having the Dell Hackintosh off to the side is also really awesome because it's right here. It's not like a server where it's put away off to the side or inconvenient to access. It's right next to the system where we'll be using it with, and we still have space on top of it, so if we need to put other accessories or other systems or really anything, we have a lot of room to work with. Not to mention all of this off to the side here. Now I know the keyboard looks out of place, but we can move it wherever we need to move it. It really just depends on if and when I need to use the Optiplex. Again, this is going to be like a server system, so I'm not going to access it all the time. I'm going to be using the Mac Pro more as the main desktop, but it is still an option because we do have everything configured. If we really wanted to, we could install another PC in this area. We clearly have the room for it, maybe some old FireWire drives to use with the other systems here. And the best part about this, we have a built-in cup holder. As for the server application on the Optiplex itself, I still need to spend more time with it, actually configure settings and make it a proper server. But at least now, it's actually where it should be. And as for the Mac Pro itself, if it looks a bit strange on camera, no, it's not because of the camera I'm using. I've been having some weird video issues with it, and sometimes it just doesn't want to display video at all. Now, fortunately, we can actually see what's going on here. Now, this might be because of the GT730 that I installed for testing, but honestly, I don't really care because I actually see this as a good excuse to reinstall Lion so we can start off fresh, especially with the server here, and it's because it will actually have more free space available once we transfer some things over to the desktop, we could also dual boot this system. So if anything, this is actually a good thing because it'll make the Mac Pro even more capable. Fortunately, the Mac Pro has helped out a lot when it comes to learning old Mac OS, seeing what kind of old applications are available, and when it comes time for reinstallation, 
I can just remove my second hard drive with my iTunes content so I don't have to worry about it rewriting over anything important. In some ways, the setup is literally better than ever, and in other ways it's probably worse. Specifically all that cable mess. Now I'm sure I have even more hardware just waiting to be installed, but small details like the Netgear switch will be fantastic, especially when it comes time for testing out a system. When I tested the Optiplex, I kept on borrowing the G5 Ethernet cable with this Airport Extreme, but now I have six Ethernet ports just available right there, and I have a lot of spare Ethernet cables, so if I need to connect a system or something up to the file server, I can just connect it. And with that, I think we're at a good spot to wrap up today's video. Fortunately, you don't have to deal with all of this nonsense off to the side. You just get to see the awesome progress and end result of the new setup. The other awesome part about these videos is that you get to experience the awesome retro Mac setup without it taking up space of your own because these are, after all, professional desktop towers and they are not exactly small. I mean, you can just see it with the size of the Airport Extreme and the entire Mac Pro right there. If you enjoyed today's video, then consider leaving a thumbs up. And if you want to see even more awesome content, then consider subscribing. We've always got awesome, cool projects in the works around here. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.